Hi everyone. I hope all of you are safe at home. Uh, this week I decided to uh, bring something different. I actually got the chance to interview Kingswoodian writer, teacher, trainer, lecturer, acclaimed writer, in fact, Gratian Prize winning, uh, a close friend of mine and a mentor to me as well, Vihanga Pereira. He's also a leading expert in English language based Sri Lankan literature. We had an interview where we talked a lot about Sri Lanka, being Sri Lankan, areas like social media, television media and the impact it has on our younger generation, tolerance and mutual respect. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you learn something as well. Here you go. So hi Vyagan. Thank you for uh, joining me today uh, from Canberra. To start with, uh, how are you? How are, how are things there in Australia? Things are pretty smooth, I think, uh, under the circumstances, things are pretty all right, yeah. Australia has been very transparent about dealing with it as far as I can understand. Okay. Because there is a lot of information out there and uh, there is a great accessibility to information. Uh, so I'm not very sure whether Sri Lanka is at the same level, but I think uh, both countries have... Uh, in their respective capacities, uh, responded responded pretty uh, smoothly to the situation. Is there anything that we could learn? When you yeah. say when you say we, do you mean like uh, ordinary people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. One thing, Sri Lankans, I think, in general, can try to practice is to be a bit less dramatic. I think. Sure. So Sri Lankans, in my <laughs> opinion, are a bit uh, dramatic, and they tend to they tend to panic a bit. So I think okay. if you can uh, try to invest in that area, yeah, things can be a little bit better. That's my opinion. All right. Uh, so so yeah, from 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 an Australian position, I think that is the biggest difference I see in the way you react to the crisis call. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little less drama on okay. this side of things. Yeah. Would you be willing to share maybe an example of? A dramatic response? Uh, largely to do with what you share on social media. Okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe like uh, three, three, four weeks back, uh, when things started uh, really hitting top gear, I think some of the material that was shared on social media, uh, not only uh, in terms of uh, information misinformation okay but also the kind of attitudes you socialize right in a crisis situation so maybe some of these things can change hopefully they will you know? hopefully hopefully yeah so one question i want to ask you is if if you were to classify sri lankans broadly how would you see us so i mean i i shouldn't make a meal out of this right this question yeah. so so other than other than I would say the the statistical, demographic, scientific uh, categorizations based on urban, rural differences, uh, class differences, yeah. leaving that aside, okay, yeah. because that's not my area. Yeah. I can at least give you three kind of bases for for classification. Okay. The the broadest would be people who uh, understand and follow cricket and people who don't okay that is one of the broadest specifications sri yeah. lankans right the second would be uh, people who respect women and who don't there i think the second category is more in sri lanka okay right okay and thirdly uh, this is also very relevant who don't people who okay. yeah people who don't respect yeah. women okay. right uh, thirdly, I would say people who have a, a consciousness of democratic values and people who don't. So here also the third category, alarmingly there seems to be a sudden surge in this second category. So those are like uh, three um, homemade applications I make to broadly classify Sri Lankans right now. You said that there are a lot of people in the second or in the latter portion of that who don't respect. Do you think this is an old problem or, or is it new? Well, I don't know. I mean, as, as far as I can reflect back, uh, 
during my lifetime yeah i feel it has been there because the way we are receptive to a problem is also different from time to time okay depends on so many factors the people you are with how old you are the kind of exposure you have had but i think this has been around it's it's a it's a sri lankan it's a, it's a societal problem i would say the the unfortunate thing is uh, yes. sometimes uh, sometimes people don't uh, actually understand that they are not respecting women or another person so it's it's not within their consciousness they don't get it so that is a sad sad part of it so people think that they are actually respecting women but uh, they haven't even started to understand the problem uh, what do you think it means to be sri lankan anyone who uh, is born in sri lanka definitely anyone who is connected in some way with aspects that are sri lankan has a right to call him or herself sri lanka even if you are not born in sri lanka even if you are let's say someone who has arrived in sri lanka from outside yeah but if you if you are part of that cultural political or economic environment in some way okay uh, over a period of time and where it, it makes meaning to you i would say you are a sri lankan that brings me to my next idea do you think that religious tolerance is kind of you know dying in the country so here i think it's not actually a problem with religion or tolerance okay so i think religion and tolerance are more or less where they should be but it's how religion and tolerance gets manipulated in certain contexts driven by various political motivations so it's not so it, it gets played out as if there is a lack of just tolerance or tolerance in general but, but one thing you can see in common is that wherever there is right there is a political undercurrent that keeps moving it so one very good example is recent uh, trouble we have had uh, targeting certain ethnic groups yeah right or or religious minorities yeah here the trouble only starts the moment a political force gets caught up in that situation so by default there is no problem religion or tolerance it's, it's where it should be it is it is where it should be in a, a civilized and uh, democratic society but people with political interests they use it to further their ends so so there's a lot of ignorance in society right so we need education for that we need activism for that we need awareness for that right also you have to realize uh, even the way people even what we call common sense is political right yeah so we have to, we have to engage with people we have to uh, create discussions where the right way of looking at an issue is discussed that awareness is disseminated among members of society right yeah so i think uh, education has a big role to play even that there, there are more people who are educated more students who are educated well educated that this problem or the impact of this problem in a in a negative sense to the society would kind of diminish and would reduce uh yeah it depends what you mean by education okay right so what 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 i define as education in this context it's nothing to do with passing your school grades or getting an x number of diplomas or degrees this is something more to do with society existence communication sharing it's it's a more qualitative value based education okay right okay that is one aspect to it right then the other aspect is how to deal with uh, uh, some of these uh, maladies of uh, modern society like misinformation disinformation uh how to read a message that is communicated to you to look for the under the uh, the underlying layers of meaning so it it's, it's a kind of a broader program yeah so it's not it's not necessarily like uh high achieving education goals that society is generally hankering after this is a different kind of education okay okay
so I, yeah i think we're going to have a little bit of problem pushing that sort of education than you know what is uh, popularly you know adopted anyway yeah but we, we need to create those alternative spaces they can be informal they can be through initiatives taken by people who feel strongly about these areas right and these things are happening yes these things are happening in other parts of the world it's yeah. happening in sri lanka too okay uh, but but one day society will realize that these are the actual tools that will be necessary for coexistence and meaningful reconciliation and until society uh, gets on track in realizing these sense that discussion has to be pushed and kept alive recently i have seen a lot of conversations about post covid 19 you know what do we do after this how do we behave after this is there going to be a, a new normal or is the normal going to change things like that how do you think our normal should change moving forward uh, look i won't be surprised if it won't change um i mean it's it's good if it changes but uh, it's mainly because uh, you see consumer capitalism consumer capitalism has this uh, almighty ability to absorb whatever and make them its own capitalism can sell che guevara okay <laughs> in society i won't be surprised if if consumerism comes back in a big way so basically this global level massive fuck up hopefully yeah. it gives people the impetus to take a step back and to revise some of our habits some of our consumer patterns uh, and so on but saying that i am also i i won't be too surprised if consumerism makes a big comeback later on because consumer capitalism has that capacity to absorb whatever and you know make them its own and move forward it's like this huge steam roller moving forward okay right okay and if there is a small plant it will definitely roll over it so that <laughs> is capitalism <laughs> that is capitalism for me okay but uh, but i'm i'm also hopeful because uh, there are so many other parallel things uh, but, happening but you are hopeful but you don't think that it will happen do you think that people are just waiting to get back to their old lives no because it's like this uh you see the world is the, the, at least the kind of techno capital capitalist world we know it's governed by big labels there there are there are companies yeah. there are people yes. who uh, who determine the direction in which the world is going so it depends how these people are going to uh make a comeback in this so called post covid universe okay but from the side of uh, society from the side of um, social activism that tries to counterbalance some of these forces yeah i think there would be uh, a lot of positive energy sure. coming from there yeah i'm i'm looking forward to that actually okay what are the sort of the the funniest herd behaviors that you see especially in in sri lanka's digitally engaging society funny yeah funny funny could be funny could be <laughs> funny ha <laughs> ha funny could be funny weird <laughs> right so funny has several meanings there yes yes um uh, so i would say you know sri lankan social media culture it also goes through various phases right so there was this phase thankfully it's over now okay or at least it's it's on the it's on the decline there was this phase where you know everything was trolled yeah. okay i mean yeah yeah everything was trolled where trolling was not funny anymore right so i it got to a point like that yeah so this is again you see this is again to do with sri lankans been dramatic exactly yeah so, that's so, what i was trying so to that, say that, that yeah. excessive trolling where trolling loses its meaning right yeah so that is one of those uh, ha ha funny moments okay. right okay excessive trolling so you can't uh, in that context raise a serious issue right that the seriousness of a issue doesn't register 
there are people who undercut it right so they are then society runs the risk of missing out on key debates key discussions right that are very crucial to that uh, that that moment of society for example take egypt's incident where social media played a big role in in fact just changing the government it just feels like in sri lanka social media is never going to be a sort of tool that can really drive change you know see social media culture itself is complex uh, see for example there are there are people who are strategically placed in various um, locations within the 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 media nursery who uh, well some of them are working on a payroll some of them that is their designated job yeah. to direct opinion right yes. so that that, that, that yes. element is also there yeah so so i would say uh, a funny uh, funny in a weird way yeah uh, a, a weird funny usage of social media yeah would again be viral sharing okay viral sharing of uh, absolutely anything and everything that comes your way so this again uh, has a lot to do with the lack of uh, basic uh, new media literacy in sri lanka right yeah. there are there are countries where new media is part of their curriculum okay. uh, from a very young age so i think sri lanka has to go there uh, i have a feeling uh, a lot of disruption a lot of disruption the country saw uh, in the past uh, one year uh, past one year minus uh, one week could have been avoided with uh, greater media literacy so yeah that was very unfortunate some of those incidents that took place right not very funny when you put it that way you know it's <laughs> all funny <laughs> yes yeah do you uh, miss Sri Lanka at the moment you know i just want to ask you to i miss yeah i miss sri lanka all the time i mean what do you miss the most about you know what, what what do you miss the most is it the it's mainly the sounds actually uh, if that is believable it's mainly the sounds uh, uh, one thing i really miss is uh, the sound of crows uh, <laughs> you know uh, there are certain sounds which are topical yeah uh, so especially birds they are very different from country to country and also morning noises morning noises okay. when you wake up in the morning what you smell what you hear so these are some things which uh, i i would say i miss uh, how, from i mean in contrast how's how's canberra's mornings you know how do they smell no canberra is canberra is brilliant yeah. canberra is one of the one of the blessings canberra in my life okay but uh, what i mean is uh, the the house i live in yeah uh, the uh, let me put it this way the 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 angle in which sunlight comes in the morning okay it it's very different from uh, how sunlight falls in my room in sri lanka in kandy okay. okay so the kandyan setting is something i have grown accustomed to over 30 years yeah, yeah. so in that sense i i miss it right okay. definitely uh, and sometimes you uh, i'm not joking but sometimes you actually miss uh, unruly three wheelers you know people who go all over the road sometimes you actually miss it you do miss them okay yeah, because uh, especially uh, motorists here are very very courteous okay uh, i have been here almost 4 years i have just seen one uh, traffic violation in 4 years right So so then you start missing traffic violations <laughs> that's how it works <laughs> look i wanted to talk to you about uh, sri lankan television you know specifically television media would you refer to them as being sensationalist i'll call them dramatic <laughs> sure <laughs> so yeah. mainly mainly uh, news uh, political programs they they are more or less scripted dramas yeah now uh, especially see, the thing is if you take a media company without naming them motivated by profit so for them maybe it's you know justified that they are dramatic and they are selling news you know um more than profit i think uh, there are other uh, 
uh, other things to which they are plugged plugged as well uh, so they are very much a part of the political industry so they have a role to play there are certain ideologies that are uh, in subtle and in more crude ways channeled through their uh, yeah. airwaves right so i don't think i, I don't think they are being uh, dramatic uh, through innocence it's a very uh, it's a very uh, known uh, political if i use this cliche it's a very known political conscious political game that they are being a part of uh so i think uh, so look this is also i think to do with the change of times uh with the change of times you see a change of media ethics as well now i remember when uh, i was a student of uh, journalism so the the very first class they teach you the basics of reporting okay. the basic uh, basic ethics of reporting okay so actually the people who taught me these lessons they, they are dead and gone right so the people who run big media companies as you say they don't come with that kind of background that that kind of uh, uh knowledge of what media is rather they are business and political interests override the ethics of media so i think that's the starting point of yeah. this sensationalism as we call it Uh, my my concern here you got students absorbing this content right if you take for example sri lanka's the youtube channel with the most number of subscribers is is one of these media outlets and and what they anyway show on television so my my concern is when you sell again when you kind of allow uh, youngsters to absorb this content how do you think it shapes society so it shapes society to suit the requirements of uh, that po- political organ with which the media institute is aligned so basically if you take i don't know certain i i would say majority of uh, majority of media yeah uh it is largely myth that is being transmitted to society okay it is largely uh, racism yeah religious division along religi- religious lines yeah now these are not uh, innocuous so these are not very harmless things at a at a crucial juncture these channels connect with the political ideology of a camp or a group with which these media institutes are colluding or with with whom they are aligned so you continue this for let's say 5 years or 10 years yeah right yeah that is how collective opinion is changed over time but polarized to to that particular political um motive oh, ideological uh, position oh, yeah. yeah that a political or ideological position and and that's good is it or bad well not 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 good for the kind of society i envision yeah but uh, it's a it's a form of so i mean if you leave the value judgments out it's a form of uh, it's a form of uh, it's 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 very similar to what we do in places like school yeah okay or prison it's a form of the word is actually hegemonizing bringing them under a, a, a hegemony hegemony is where you win the agreement of a group of people to be ruled right yeah so through this media by shaping the minds of this population or the people in a particular way the people who rule about the political elite they are winning their agreement to be ruled in a certain way i hope this sparks a certain discussion toward maybe fighting that it can't be fought you you can be very easily eliminated you can't fight that because these strings are pulled by people very high up they are the people who write the destinies of people like branuddin and vihan <laughs> very small players not even players in this game right yeah so so you need uh, like mass mobilization if at all it, it's a very idealistic response but you need you need uh, decisive change against that flow 
So for that you need organization, you need awareness, you need people to tirelessly, tirelessly champion that that counter energy. So it, it, it's a it's a big thing. So it's it's not something one or two people can do, just so like that. Have you thought about leading decisive change? I am by nature a very lazy person, and I am someone who doesn't have that kind of energy. So I think my role is to uh, talk. Okay. So there was a time when I was working in the university. Yeah. <coughs> the government actually paid me to talk. There was a time like that, uh, very good times. Okay. So I would just talk to people. They would pay me, right? Right. But I I don't have uh, the, the kind of energy you need for political activism. But there are people with it. Yeah. And doing some really good work in Sri Lanka. When you do a little bit of research and you, you try to understand how much. Uh, Sri Lanka drinks. We are uh, quite literally one of the countries in South Asia that consumes a large amount of alcohol. Why do you think we drink so much? Maybe one reason is uh, when you are dramatic, <laughs> right? Uh, you find it difficult to draw lines at proper places. So Sri Lanka has that problem of drawing the line at the proper place. Um, this is seen in everything. Now, for example, uh, let's say something something very simple like helping a aged woman to cross the road. Yeah. So you, you help her cross the road. But uh, you need to go the next step. Ideally, it has to stop there. But But you do something extra that takes away the meaning of what you have just done. done. Yeah. So there is a big problem about being moderate about things. So, so I think that is the problem with drinking. The drinking culture, yeah. it hasn't struck a moderate tone. Because I have been watching news consistently for the past couple of weeks and it just seems like the entire country is kind of desperate to drink, to drink. Yeah, but my, my, my problem is, why is this in the news? That's my problem, whether, whether this is news or if it is in news, why is it in the news? Is it because uh, the news people feel that people like to see this kind of thing? Um, so, so that is the problem, not the, not the, not the drinking per se. But I think uh, drinking, I, I was going to add this to the the last uh, statement I made about uh, the lack of moderation. Yeah. I think all this have to come with uh, education. So these are values you have to cultivate. Where do you draw the line in drinking? Okay. Right? Based on your life experiences, if you could uh, give maybe a couple of advices or suggestions especially to the student, you know, to, to the uh, teenage, young adult student. Ah, you mean like uh, in general? Yeah, in general. Being Sri Lankan or being alive, the most important thing to me uh, is the rights of others. Okay. So, especially people who don't have the same privileges as you uh, by virtue of belonging to a slightly smaller group. Right, so what we call numerical minorities, it could be ethnic, it could be religious, it could be based on uh, how you have sex, whatever, right? So one suggestion I would like to make is to kind of uh, cultivate and encourage practices where you are inclusive of other people's uh, sentiments. Right. So that is that is very important for me. Maybe that is the only one thing. Uh, that is uh, important to be as a uh, social individual. But if you feel that you don't agree with, with another's opinion? Yeah, that is your problem. So, you have to find a way of dealing with it. Maybe you can, uh, I don't know, kick a football or whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah. You have to find, find your way of dealing with it. But then you have to understand that you are living within a framework of a larger society with People who are 99% of the time not going to agree with you. 
or not going to fall in the same camp uh, as with you. So I think uh, the, the only suggestion slash advice slash plea I have to make is regarding the uh, position of uh, groups that are not yours, people who belong in different camps in terms of faith, skin color, caste, whatever. Uh, look, and gender, about women, we have our mother, even though we have female teachers who have taught us our entire life, so in that sense, anything that you want to say? The thing I would say is to give up the entire mother-sister approach. Okay. Right? Right. Since I have a mother and if this happens to your sister, that approach is still about you. It's not about the woman. It's about you if you say, okay, my, since I have a mother, right, that is that is still about you. Okay. So you have, you have to let go of that. You have to respect that individual at the level of that individual. So you have to cultivate that kind of empathy. Right? So, especially in a community like Sri Lanka, where people largely grow up segregated, you are not yeah. together from, yeah. from a very young age, right? Some people you only get to work closely with uh, the opposite uh, sex, maybe when you uh, go out to society and start working. Yeah. So maybe until you are about 20, 22, you are largely within the confines of your own sex. Right? Yeah. So now my problem is I actually grew up with women most of the time. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, this is I think I, I, I tell this as an anecdote. Some 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 people find this funny, but uh, to be very honest, from the time I was 17 years old, because of the subjects I studied, the kind of education stream I followed, it was always uh, female dominated in some of the tuition classes I went to, even in university, the male-female ratio was so flipped on the side of the female, right? There were cases, I mean, me being the only guy in class, that was uh, more or less a day in the office for me. So when that happens for 17 years, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, I tell this in the way of anecdote that I am not uh, totally male. Because <laughs> 17 years, there is a kind of a emulation, right? Kind of emasculation that has happened, and uh, it is uh, very true that sometimes I find uh, male talk very disturbing. Sometimes I, I I find it very difficult to plug into male talk. Right. So sometimes we have uh, batch get-togethers, right, where they are talking about uh, mud guards of vehicles and you know, good racks, uh, stuff like that. It's, it's very difficult for me to... But in certain other ways, uh, I can uh, gauge the female environment in a better way. So I think, once yeah. again, the, the moral of the story is... Yeah. It's a part of... Uh, it, it's, it's about growing empathy. Yes. So, it's a, it's a kind of a... It's, it's a... It takes time and you need to invest there. Yeah. But it's, it's something you have to do. If it doesn't come naturally, yeah. or until it comes naturally, one day, yeah. right? You have to take that step back yeah. uh, from your arrogance, right? From that uh, brute self that you carry, and try to act. So this is not only about women, huh? So exactly. this is about exactly. yes. everyone, right? Yeah. All right. So that sums up the first round of questions <laughs> I have for you in terms of talking about the country.